Amen. Thank you and praise the Lord. Today we have entered into the crystallization of Hebrews, which is the last message, message 24. The headlines of this message enter the within the veil and go outside the camp. There are two words, veil and camp. We need to enter into the veil and go outside the camp. Enter within the veil and go outside the camp. What does it mean? Let us come to the scripture, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19, which we have as an anchor of the soul, both secure and firm, and which enters within the veil. Amen. This veil, what does it mean? Enter into the veils. When we look at the Old Testament, tabernacle have three sections. The outer court, the holies place, and the holies of holies. Between the outer court and the holies, there's a veil. And between the holy place and the holies of holies, there are veil that separate both of it. So this veil is the cover between the holies and the holies of holies. When we enter into the veil, means we enter into the holies of holies. Praise the Lord. Our Christian, we need to enter the veil. In the New Testament, into the holies of holies is our spirit. We have, as human, we have three parts, body, mind, and soul. Just like tabernacle have three sections, which is the outer court, the holy place, and the holies of holies. God's will today desire us to be in the holies of holies. Thank you, Lord. He doesn't want us to be in our soul or in our flesh. Therefore, in Romans chapter 8, to set our mind in, in, in the flesh is that, but set our mind on spirit is the life and peace. This is the life within the veil. And to go outside the camp, what does it mean? In Hebrew 13, verse 13 says here that, Let us therefore go forth unto him outside the camp bearing his reproach amen jesus lord when he was here on the earth he went he went outside the camp he reproached bearing his reproach bearing sufferings and in books of hebrews let us encourage us to go out of the camp which is this camp is not a good thing this camp is the camp of religious how could we know the history background is from Exodus? In here, Moses has set up the uh, set out a tent out of the side of the camp, and he called this tent of meeting. And then those who desire to meet the Lord Jehovah need to go to the tent of meeting, which is outside the camp. At that mo at that time, Moses went to the mountain to receive the commandments from the Lord Jehovah, but but on below the hills, Aaron and the people, they create an idol the, and they worship that idol. When Moses came, the Lord Jehovah was kindled and then Moses smashed the commandments and that and that place is a camp because there's a worshiping idols and Moses went out to the camp and the Lord Jehovah doesn't stay in this camp because it's full of idols. They say they worship God, but their worshiping is worshiping the idols. Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ came upon the earth, there's the same principle. Jew, Jewish, Jewish, they become a camp. Why they become a camp? Because the religious Jew, Jewish, they although they didn't although they didn't worship the idols, but they are in the same principle because the Jewish religion, they worshiping they prioritize, which is their three pillars. They prioritize first is the circumstances second to eat the clean food and third is the sabbath and by by accepting this 
culture, it become their idols. Why I'm saying this? Because in Ezekiel chapter 14, here it says that, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their hearts and have put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Their idols set in their hearts. What does it mean? These idols nowadays, it's not just like the statue, but it's in the heart. Man thinks, if we still prioritize these things and we replace these things, replace Christ with these things, it become our idols in our heart. So when this Jesus Christ came upon the earth, he incarnated and Jewish, they should know and they should pursue him that this God have came. They are seeking for the Messiah. And when the Messiah came, they didn't know. Actually, Jesus Christ is Messiah. But they were, they were against Jesus. They against him, especially about Sabbath day in Matthew 12. On Sabbath day, Jesus Christ brought his disciples and through the grain fields. And they picked the grain and eat. And the Pharisees said to them that they are not lawful do, to do on the Sabbath. But Jesus said, Sabbath is for the Son of Man. So Sabbath day, they say they can do anything. But Jesus said that if a lamb, if a lamb fell into the pit, would you help it? Lift it out? But he said to the man that he is the son. Sabbath is for the son of man. So he is the one who will help this, his, this lamb. But these people, they won't accept this. They just think that they are rejecting him because they, they are against Jesus Christ, against their culture. Therefore, they persecuted Jesus. From that day on, those people against the Lord Jesus and try to find a way to get rid of Jesus. In Matthew 12, 14, but Pharisees going out to, to counsel how to destroy him. They try to destroy Jesus Christ, which is God. Therefore, the background is the background behind this is idols, which is Satan. Satan is the one who controls them. They use people things to let people worship those things and prioritize these things other than Christ, which is our God. This is from Satan. Therefore, in the Old Testament, his people failed again and again because from two things. First, worship the idols. And second, having adultery. This is what God really hate. This is against the God, Lord Jesus. Therefore, the Jewish religious, they are, they, they, prioritize their Sabbath day as their idols and become their spiritual adultery because they prioritize this than Jesus Christ. Therefore, they persecuted Jesus. Today, brothers and sisters, we are in the same principle. We are in the Lord's recovery. Many of Christianity try to against us or giving us fake opposed because we haven't affirmed anyone, but the church of God in Bangkok, the church of God in the, among the lost recovery, we don't have Jesus picture. We don't have any picture of Jesus Christ or don't have the cross as a symbols. We don't do Christmas or Easter day. We don't have this kind of culture. When people ask us, we need to declare to them clearly that if we have the cross, which is the symbols, this will become idols. We need to consider about it because many Christianity, this becomes their idols. Some just having cross at their home because they thought that the cross can cast out demons. They, they might take it from the film and they thought this would help that the cross as a, as a thing is very divine. It cannot help us anything. What is the spiritual meanings? We need to be dealt. We need to end. But if we worship this cross, 
the big cross and we think that it is a very worship we need in worship among Christianity this is a failure and secondly picture of Jesus Jesus is God but but why we need we shouldn't reject him and why shouldn't we have his picture because the picture of Jesus is a fake thing actually his face is not like that we need to look at Isaiah chapter 53 he is like a tender plant root out of dry ground there's no attracting no majesty and no beautiful appearance according to Bible it says like that and when you take a picture we have he has a circle of radius and should we accept this we shouldn't accept this because this is from man's thought if we still have these things and we before when I was a kid when I pray I, when I close my eyes and that kind of image gets into my eyes and I pray to this image and Jesus Christ this is a very mistakes that this pic this image replaced the Jesus Christ and I completely turn I don't want I won't receive I won't accept the cross and the, any image and about Christmas I really like when I was young because there are people who have a choir sing very exalted because at that time we don't have a revelation and then I have received the revelation I need to reject this because the background of this Christmas day is the 25th of December is the day of the pagan the worldly people is the birthday of the sun at that time Romans they worship the sun on 25th of December but there are a king which is Constantine when he turned to God he has he's zealous and so he changed this day become Jesus Christ's birthday and now among the Christians they 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 also believe that until today so Christmas they not only Christians celebrating but even the club in the bar or in the malls they are still worship is this adulterous is this adultery for us this is adultery therefore we won't accept this we reject it we cannot for you cannot force us but those who worship and prioritize these things they try to up against us because we are too we don't search for the truth in the bible we need to get into the truth what does bible record this is very important because god wants us to get saved and he decides all men to know the truth completely not just very thin but they need to thoroughly know the truth so among the churches in the recovery we really follow the practice in the bible so if anyone against it we won't gonna we won't gonna think too much many are trying to oppose us so we just even we just think that even jesus christ those who same nations with him the patriots his patronize also persecuting him cast casting out demons with he they they assume that jesus christ cast out demons within the name of Beelzebub. oh lord jesus is this a very damaging so the one who crucified the jesus on the cross is not pilates pilates but it is the Jewish, those Jewish. They, they, and now they just shouting out, crucified him, crucified him. Therefore, he died on the hand of Jewish. And when he crucified on the cross, what is he pray? He prayed, oh, father, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. And among Christianity today, they didn't even know what they are doing. A while ago, there's a one who posting something in Facebook trying to oppose us and I, we need to ask him do you, does he know himself how could they judge brother witness Lee or brother witness Lee have he read much of their books yet how much they understand they don't know much and they judge them and this I try not to judge them and this is the background of it is the demons 
if we are not in the spirit, it is easy for us to be in the camp and we will be controlled by Satan to go against his work. Oh Lord Jesus, may the Lord mercy us. Mercy us, truly mercy us. Help, help us to save us from the camp of religious. We need to go outside the camp. The camp have idols, have adultery, which is against God, which God have, he doesn't exist in there. We need to follow Jesus. Therefore, where is Jesus nowadays? He is in our spirit. Therefore, we need to turn to our spirit. We need to live in the well and we need to be in the spirit. When we are in the spirit, we can meet Jesus Christ. Therefore, to be in the spirit, to be in the within the veil is a very great thing. When we are in the spirit, we are outside the camp. We are not inside the camp anymore. If you are not in the spirit, there's a chance for you to be inside the camp. And there are more opportun chance to let the demons to work in us. Sometimes if you are in the flesh, we are in the world, or we are in the camp. Oh, these satans can have a chance. Therefore, we need to be in our spirit. We need to enter into the veil. And how can we turn to the spirit? We need to exercise our spirit. The message here says to us clearly that in point C, to enter within the veil is to get into our spirit. When we turn to our spirit and exercise it, we enter within the veil. Point one, we have to exercise to use to employ our spirit by fanning our spirit into flame, setting our mind on the spirit and discerning our spirit from our soul. We must exercise our spirit that we may enter within the veil to have direct contact with the heavenly Christ, demanding glory, beholding him to be transfused and infused with him so that we may become his corporate reproduction. Therefore, we need to exercise our spirit. How can we turn to our spirit? The only way is to call upon his name, O oh Lord Jesus. This is very important. Among Christianity, they don't, some haven't, haven't seen this. Some also oppose calling upon the name of the Lord without understanding. We need to come and look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking in the Spirit of God says, Jesus is accursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. If you're, in, if you're not in the Holy Spirit, no one can say Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Therefore, if you want to say this word, it means you need to be in the Holy Spirit. Or on the other hand, if you speak this, it means that you are in the Holy Spirit. And according to this verse, if you, are in, if you want to be in the Holy Spirit, which is in our spirit, you need to speak out, Oh, Lord Jesus. Because Jesus is Lord. So that therefore we can speak like this. Oh Lord Jesus. Oh Lord Jesus. Is this, Jesus is Lord. Thank you Lord. We need to exercise our spirit. To call him Oh Lord Jesus. When you call his name. Will help us. To from the, out the camp. From our flesh. From ourselves. And turn to our spirit. This name has a power that turns us into the spirit and and let us save from the religious from the world and turn to the spirit therefore we need to call on his name many against upon calling upon even saul saul when he was in darkness in the religious he don't understand and he opposed in acts 9 he came from the authority of those chief priests and call upon to all bind all the upon them on your name. So to call upon the name is a great strategy, spiritual strategy. And Satan would not allow this. Therefore Saul he 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 turned and then he be he's leading. And in verse in chapter 12, those in Romans chapter 12, uh, no, chapter 10, Paul encouraged us to call upon the name of the Lord. 
Therefore, we need to have a kind of living which is within the veil. To by exercising our spirit to call upon His name, because those who love Jesus is the one who will call upon His name day by or day or night. When we wake up in the morning, we need to see. We need to call upon His name. Oh Lord Jesus, we love you, Lord. Oh Lord Jesus, we open to you, Lord. Oh Lord Jesus, dispense yourself into me. Every day we need to have this kind of pray. We need to exercise our spirit and call upon His name. That we can have an overcoming life, because we will live within the veil in the spirit, and when we live in the spirit, what is the result? We will enjoy. In point C three, to be within the veil is to be in the holies of holies, in a realm where we partake of Christ and enjoy Him as the hidden manna, the budding rod, and the law of life, issuing in God's corporate expression for the fulfillment of His eternal purpose. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, when we call upon His name, we turn to our spirit. We can meet our Christ. Christ is the hidden manna. He is the budding rod, and He is the law of life. The law of life. Therefore, when we are in our spirit, we can enjoy Him as the manna, hidden manna, which is very sweet. Don't we? Don't think that we only enjoying hidden manna. To to we need to go outside the camp. We need to be in the spirit, not just going out like are going against oppose others. And you say that we are hidden manna. This is impossible. We need to be in the spirit. We need to go outside the camp. We need to live within the veil, so then we can experience this hidden manna, and he will become our resupply. And the more he supply us, the more we will be strengthened. And we can overcome the camp of religious, and we won't have part in it. And we will willing to go out of it. If we are not strong enough, we might enter and enter and leave, enter and leave the camp. We might get into it or get into the veil, and then get out of the veil and enter into the camp. Many are in. This is very chaos. We need to go outside the camp permanently, and live within the veil. That we need to anchor our soul, how firm and ground in our spirit, be in the veil, anchor in it, in there. Amen. Therefore, we can enjoy Him and meet Him. This is what that He desires and bring us to become an overcomer. This will fulfill His eternal purpose. This is how to build up the body of Christ, build up the church as His body, and to fulfill this eternal purpose in the only those who are in the veil. May the Lord mercy us and mercy us in this message that we need to meet Jesus outside the camp, living in a veil, be in our spirit, enjoy Him every day, exercise our spirit. Every day, call upon His name, turn our heart to our into our spirit, and then enjoy this hidden manna, the budding rod, which is the resurrection life and the law of life, which is overcomes all law. This law can free us from law of death and sin, so that we can have a strong Christian life. May the Lord bless us all. That we won't be a Christian who go backwards like the Hebrews, but we need to go forward, advance to Christ, and enter into the veil, go outside the camp, and anchor in there, enjoy and be one with Him. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Our go brother was and have let us see in this message. That to enter into the veil and go outside the camp, brothers and sisters, to enter into the veil and go outside the camp, to enter into the veil has been declared in Hebrews six, and to go outside the camp is in Hebrews thirteen, which brothers and sisters to enter into the veil is to turn to our spirit and be in there and live in our spirit. And to go outside the camp is to go out of the camp of religion. 
Therefore, in here also related to what Jesus Christ has told in the gospel books, if anyone who follow me, let those one follow me, uh, deny themselves and take up the cross to f and follow him. To take up the cross is to follow him, which in Hebrews 13 says that to Paul said to us that we need to go outside the camp and meet him and follow him there, which the Lord Jesus at that time, he was crucified on the cross outside the Jerusalem, which is Jerusalem is the camp of religion, which is the setting up of the Jewish religion. Therefore, to be camp with the Lord Jesus, he was crucified outside the camp. Therefore, if you want to follow the Lord, we need to take up the cross is to go outside the camp. Therefore, the Lord has said that go into the narrow path, narrow gate, because there's less people in there. And the religion is the big tree, principle of big tree, according to Matthew 13 about the par parables. He talks about there are four seeds, which was the first one uh, fell beside the way and the birds came and devoured them, which is Satan. So that the word of God, which is the seeds cannot grow. And then the Lord Jesus go furthermore on the Paris par parables about kingdom should be like a mustard seed. Mustard seed is a small tree and for it's a food for man. But this development of kingdom become a tree and there are birds come and roost what does it mean this is the fallen christian the current fallen christianity and there's birds which is satan leaves roost we can see in revelation chapter 2 in here it says there's sin synagogues of satan there's a place for Satan. Therefore, among the Christ fallen Christianity becomes the camp. I'll go, Brother Watson have mentioned it. To enter into the veil is to turn to our spirit, to be in the spirit. And the way is to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Saul, Saul, he was the one before he was the leading one of the Pharisees. And even as the authority from the chief priest. And then what happened to him? He persecuted those who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. But after a while, after he got saved, he also encouraged to call upon the name. Therefore, for this, thank you for this revelation. Saul has been saved and he can go out of the religion. We can see the script epistles from Galatians that Jesus Christ is against the religion, especially Jewish religion. And these two matters enter into the veil and go outside the camp. If you get into the deep root of Hebrews, we could see the encouragement, the word from Paul is about to these two matter enter into the veil and go outside the camp therefore the deep root of this hebrews is to enter into the veil why according to hebrews 2 this jesus christ enter into the glory he enter into the veil which is in the temple of the heavens when he enter into the veil and where is he now he is in our spirit which is the holies of holies. Therefore, to enter into the veil is to turn to our spirit. To turn to our spirit is to follow the Lord Jesus, being in his presence. And how about going outside the camp? Jesus go outside the camp, which is Jewish religion at that time. That religion is like a camp in Matthew 15. If you look into the 
Bible, we can see that the Jewish become religion. At that time, they just did what happens in Exodus 32. Je what did Jesus say? Jesus said, Hypocrites, well has Isaiah prophesied concerning you, saying, These people honors me with their lips, but their heart stays away, far away from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching as the teachings of the commandments of men. And there's one of the teachers among the denominations. They, he preached, he said that he, he, he declared that he preached almost an hour, about, around, about an hour. And he just speak about the two verses in the, in the beginning. And then he just speak what he did, with whom he did. He went out to travel out, which is full of man's teaching. He worship in vain. He he used the word word of man to become teaching. Therefore, this is the same as the Jewish religion in Hebrews. If we say it easily, that these are the one who are fighting each other among Jewish, and they try to find a way to destroy Jesus. But authority of their among the religion, they don't have the authority to crucify him. So they need to use the hand of Romans, which is Pilate, which is the representative. And lastly, in this authority, they can capture Jesus and crucify him on the cross and trying to startle the people. What does it mean? We can see that there is a politics and religion and John nineteen twenty. There's a word. On the tree, tree language is written on the cross, which is Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. Hebrew was represented of religion, and Latin is the language for Romans, which is politics, and Greek is the about culture. What does it mean? Politics, po culture, and religions captured the Lord Jesus and crucified on the cross. Therefore, the church shouldn't have part in. The, the religion, culture, and the politics. Therefore, Paul said we need to go out of the camp and bear the reproach, bear Jesus' reproach. We need to follow the narrow path in the Lord's recovery. If you want to walk in this path, you need to prepare yourself. We need to get into our spirit, turn in our spirit. If you turn in your spirit, you will go outside the camp. If you say that we are in the spirit, it means that we need to get out of the camp of religion. And we are in the Lord's recovery. We need to learn not to have part in politics and culture. I didn't mean that we should go against the government. But the meaning is that we don't have part. We don't have part, for example, about politics, about the culture. For example, the tradition among Christianity, they use the tradition of the Gentiles. Foreigners, which is about Christmas, which is not Jesus' birthday. It doesn't have any recording in the Bible. It means that among the church, among the recover, the Lord's recovery, we are the church of God. We are the body of Christ. Therefore, the, as Christ as the head, head has gone outside the camp and bear the reproach. And we don't have part in politics and religion and culture too. But the church should be like a mustard seed to supply supplying the word of God, the living word. And in Roman numero 2 says about to go outside the camp, which the scriptures reading is in Exodus, which a while ago brother was and have grow through it. And I would like to support a little bit. At that time, Moses went to the Mount of Sinai and Aaron and the people have molten a, a golden calf. I would read some of the verses to you. In Exodus 32, verse 4 and the people tore off the golden rings which were in the ears in their ears and brought them to Aaron and Aaron, before that Aaron said to them tear off the gold rings which are in ears of your wives or your sons and your daughters and bring them to me actually this gold is from Egypt actually it's for offering to build up 
the tabernacle. But in here, Aaron, which is become the priest, ordered the people to tear off their gold rings and then molten a calf. Calf? If we look at the history, Egyptians' gods is in the shape of calf. Therefore, Israelites was constituted with Egyptians' culture. Therefore, their gods is calf. Calf. Therefore, what is our god? Someone says money is god. Brothers and sisters, this is worshipping idols, the same principle. Therefore, Paul says in Ephesians that to greed is to worshipping idols. And furthermore, verse 5, when Aaron saw this, he built an altar and in front of the calf, they built an altar and says, Tomorrow shall be a feast to Jehovah. When you read, do you feel confused? They molten a calf among the altar and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to Jehovah. It means mixing. And tomorrow, what happened? The early rose up early in the next day, offered burnt offerings and brought eat peace offering and the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play brothers and sisters this is just like in second timothy at that time those people would love to play even among christianity therefore we which is the brothers and sisters in the lord's recovery we need we need to be testified this and we need to testify against it that our living, we shouldn't go accept this. We still need to go and work and offer our belongings, just like what Jesus has said in Luke chapter 6 about the prudent stewards. Though he used this money to, to create friends. So money is evil. So to worship, this is against God. Therefore, brothers and sisters, someone use this like uh, gating altar in front of Jehovah and worship Jehovah. And among Christianity is have lots of missing, mixing. And then what happened in chapter Exodus 33, uh, chapter 32. At that time, Aaron replied to Moses that, do not let the anger of my Lord burn. You know the people that there. And 23. For they said to me. Let us see here. They say, for they said to me. Actually, Aaron is the one who charged the people to bring their gold rings. And he lied that. Make a God for us who will be for God us. And he said threw it, tear it off and gave it to me and I threw it into the fire and the calf came out in here. Aaron, Aaron might have a art of speaking, but even just like those who are in the Christianity, sometimes they have this art to, to glorify themselves. And in Exodus 28, the priest garments is for the beautiful and beautify and glorification, which signifies Christ. Therefore, in Roman numeral 2.a, says that we need to see and be warned by the principle of the golden calf idol, which is an idol made by God's redeemed people. Therefore, where does it came from? It is from the Gentiles, it's from the constitution of the Gentiles. And therefore, his people make them an adulterous camp. And furthermore, in chapter 23, Moses tent, set up a tent of meeting. And what did he say? In point one, self beautification leads to adultery. Like earrings, earrings, women likes to wear earrings, even men likes to wear earrings these days for beautification. Therefore, when we receive money, 
is not to def beautification ourselves, but we need to learn a lesson from Abraham. He have lots of belongings. Actually, he shouldn't be that rich, but he lives a life as a tent, pitch the tent and build up an altar. He then set up a life in the earth world. This is the opposition and is testifying of against it. And in point two, idolatry is what God has given us in order to make it a waste. Actually, gold is the one that God gave, but Satan's usurping of what God has given in order to make it a waste. So the background of it is from Satan. Therefore, human use it in a wrong way, make it a waste. Oh, abusing what God has given us and not using God's gift for God's purple purpose. Uh, the belongings, the belongings that God have gave us, we need to learn to use it to gain friends. Therefore, what is it be used for? It's for the gospel, for the truth, so that people could get increased, and those those who are in the church could could know more. Therefore, we need to learn to offer our own belongings to. Therefore, the church on the well, all those offering from the saints, the church needs to use it for God's interest on earth. No matter about gospel or the truth or the life, so that the saints can grow in life. What does it say in here? In point three, adultery is the worship of the things we enjoy. The worship of enjoyment, amusement, and entertainment. A while ago, like Second Timothy, because they love themselves, they love themselves, and they love their belongings, and they gain more much money, and they were willing to use to for their entertainment. Therefore, in about godly things, we shouldn't be like that. Before that, in Ten Commandments, Jehovah says in Exodus twenty, you shall not. Uh, Make the name of Jehovah in vain. To create idols is a, a religious thing. Therefore, we shouldn't be mixed. Like in Matthew 13, that woman who have a leaven, put leaven inside the bread. This kind of activities is to make it, to let people get in, enter. But we should go into a narrow gate, a narrow path. Therefore, in Exodus here, in Exodus 33 and 7, Moses had set a camp outside of the camp, uh, set out a tent outside the camp. Some distance from the camp, he called a tent of meeting and everyone who saw Jehovah went out to the tent of meeting which was outside the camp. Therefore, are you in the religion, Christianity? Are you in the human denominations if you ask for jehovah you don't have answer or we might you might be led by satan even humans teaching and furthermore in verse 8 moses went out to the tent all the people would rise up and stand every man at the entrance of his tent and gaze after moses until he entered the tent and whenever moses entered the tent the pillar of the cloud would descend and stay at the entrance of the tent and Jehovah would speak with Moses. What does it mean? The pillar of cloud is signifying the presence of God. Entering the veil is to enter in the presence of God. Moses, we went out of the camp and set up the tent of meeting. There's a presence of the Lord Jehovah and there's a speaking. If you're in the Christianity, there are only humans teaching. There are no God's presence. There are no God speaking because pillar of cloud also signifying the word of God. Uh, the, the, sorry, pillar of cloud means the presence of the Lord. But the pillar of fire is the word of God. According to John chapter 3, Jesus have gave us the spirit by, not by measure to speak the word of God. Revelation 2 and 3, let us see that according to the history, the church 
has the speaking of the Spirit. They have the speaking of the Lord Jesus. Therefore, among the Lord's recovery, the leading brothers have become a role model for us, especially Brother Watchman and Brother Witness Lee. Brother Watchman started to write spiritual books until today, almost 100 years. His writings have more than 20,000 pages and Brother Lee has continued this ministry full of the word of speak his speaking from 19 centuries until 1997 for 50 years. Therefore, by this faithful servant for almost 70 years, we have received a rich speaking of the Lord Jesus. Even some saints that came among us asked us that, so how many books you've got? But there's a servant of the Lord say, reply that we need to ask that how much time you have? How much time you have to read it? What does it mean? It means that his spe the speaking of the Spirit is not by measure, un unlimited. This means that the Lord Jesus really in presence in us. He is not in the denomination, not in among the religion. So the writings of Brother Watch Many, more than 20,000 pages, and the life study. And nowadays they are uh, concluding both of the writings of both brothers. For the 70 years, there are 100, more than 100,000 pages of brothers and sisters. Let us think, if you use five minutes for one page, how long would you finish? How long it will take for you to finish all? So let me, may the Lord mercy us all. Thank you, Lord. On the one hand, we can enter into the veil, turn into a spirit. And on the other hand, we need to go out of the camp. When we come to point B3, what happened over there? God and Moses become were companions, associates, partners, involved the same career and having common interest in a great enterprise, which is to build up the tabernacle. The tabernacle is the presence of God. We who are in the New Testament here, in Matthew chapter 15, Jesus said, the Jewish and J Jerusalem is like a camp. And when you come to the next chapter, he wants to build up his church. And in Hebrews also reveals to us that in chapter 12 says, the church is unshaken, unshaken kingdom. Therefore to enter into the veils and go out of the camp, what is the issue? that we can have uh, associates, partners to build up the church, which is the body of Christ. And when he returns, we will receive this kingdom as our gift, as our reward. Yeah. And here, Hebrews 13, 14 here, we need to see that we should be the one who seek after the remaining city, which is the new Jerusalem, the new heavens and on the new earth. When we are living in this world, on the one hand, we need to enter into the veil. We need to turn to our spirit, exercise our spirit. We need, and on the other hand, we need to go out of the camp, out of the politics and culture to bear the reproach. We are not seeking for the reproach, but if we get out of the camp, we, we will face persecution. But when we go out of the camp, we have, have having meeting with God. We have his presence, we have his speaking. This can encourage us so that we could receive this grace and have part to build up the body of Christ to receive the kingdom as our rewards and awaits for the new Jerusalem, the new heavens on new earth. And in this book of Hebrews can encourage us, controls us to cross the river. Thank you, Lord. We need to cross the river in our experience day by day until he will return. Amen.